Um, but um, um, probably the the scariest thing was was some of the the things that I did with the the Poyos at night, you know, on the Mexican side of the border. Um, I felt like you know it was I was very vulnerable. Um, um, yes. Is this the book you set out to write? <laughs> um, well, yes and no. I mean, um, Judge Farr wrote this history of Imperial County that I, I got, and uh, I began with that years and years ago. And I thought, okay, so let's try and learn about these pioneers. There was a guy in there named uh, Wilbur Clark. Um, and he talked about how he had this little establishment called the Wilfrida Ranch, which I eventually figured out must be somewhere around Sealy. Uh, he had a little date orchard uh, and a dairy. This would have been in the early 1920s. And it said that, you know, he was a bookworm, had lots of books, and um, was an amateur astronomer. And it sounded like, you know, kind of a, a neat life. And I wanted to to learn more about him and I wished him the best and I hoped that his life was going to turn out uh, very happily and in the end after lots and lots of research I found that he and his wife eventually um, sold out and went to San Diego and it seemed like their operation didn't prosper that much and um, when you read these early accounts of Imperial County you know, you talk about, they talk about how it's the richest place in the country, maybe. It's the fastest growing county. Um, and, uh, but there are a lot of broken dreams. Um, a lot of land speculators. Um, a lot of hype. And sometimes people doing things that might not have made sense, like uh, dairy. It seemed like a lot of the dairies just didn't work out. <laughs> um, yes? Question. Um, did you address anything about when the land was confiscated or sold that belonged to the Japanese Americans when they were interned in Manzanar? Um, no, ma'am, I didn't. There's very little uh, about the Japanese Americans in here. Um, um, I read uh, to you one of the, the interviews that I was lucky enough to get with uh, Alice Woodside. And her mother, uh, Edith Carpen, who died recently, uh, it, uh, her ashes are scattered on uh, Signal Mountain, um, talked a little bit um, about the Japanese. Uh, but um, there's very little in there. There's a question in the corner. In oh, the I'm shadows. sorry, I didn't see you. Yeah, please. Uh, there's a lot of kind of empty land between Holtville and the river. Do you say much about that? Uh, you mean between Holtville and the New River? No, the whole, and the Colorado River. Oh, the Colorado River. Well, um, um, I visited the Bard Subdistrict a couple of times, and I thought that is a beautiful, beautiful area. You know, it looks a little bit like Utah almost. You see these mountains in the background, um, and um, I like the, the date groves there, uh, and the way that the Colorado River shifted so that uh, I guess uh, some of the people there pay some taxes to Arizona and others to California. It's quite bizarre and interesting. Um, so I mentioned that a little bit. But as you see, you know, it's, uh, it's a long, long book, and still I should have mentioned a lot more. <laughs> uh, yes? The canal from dirt to concrete. What do you hear? The All-American Canal? Well. Um, there are two sides, you know. One side is that um, by lining the canal with concrete, um, water will be saved. And San Diego, I guess, is paying to have that um, lining done. And then, as a result, they get the water that's saved. Uh, and that all seems well and good. The other side of it is that um, there are quite a few um, small towns on the Mexican side with wells, um, some of these ajitos, um, that have survived as a result of seepage from the canal. And so the people I've interviewed there are saying that the, 
the wells are dropping. And I guess there's some concern about some of the wetlands right around the canal too, that some of those might dry up. Uh, yes? What about the interaction between American and Mexican culture? Um, well, um, that's really what I try to concentrate on in my book. And, um, you know, it is such a complex story. Um, you know, there's the, um, the interaction between Mexican and American labor. Um, there's the whole border culture thing. Um, you know, there are um, feelings that uh, Mexicans have about um, having lost their land in the Mexican War and feelings that Americans have about Mexicans maybe taking their jobs. So there, um, and yet, in spite of the, the antagonism, you know, that I sometimes feel, um, there's this kind of syncretic culture um, that, uh, that I've come to love very much. And that's why this book is called Imperial, and it's not just about Imperial County. It's about the whole valley, the Mexicali Valley, the Imperial Valley, and the Coachella Valley. And how interesting that we can draw imaginary lines, like a border or a county line, across this valley. And then after a few years or decades, things start looking very different on one side of the line or the other. It's so fascinating. Uh, yes? Well, for sure, the book is interviews with people, the ones like the ones you read. I'd say maybe 20% or less. Yeah. Um, you know, there's a, there's a long chapter about oranges, for instance. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I thought I would spare you. Uh, <laughs> Yes? And you said this area was very fast developing. But where in that whole valley is it, de is it development just on the American side or on the Mexican side or both? Or? Well, let's see. You mean right now? Yeah. Um, well, some of um, eastern Calexico is growing. Um, Indio is definitely sprawling okay. like crazy. Um, and... Um, you know, there's that um, that eastern uh, port of entry border crossing with Calexico. I guess there's some talk about um, setting up some factories and other businesses there, um, and uh, and possibly some new geothermal as well. I believe. Uh, yes. Did you do any research about the Colorado River bursting its banks in? Forming the Salton Sea. Yes, ma'am, I did. The railroad. Uh, yeah, what an amazing story that was, huh? Um, the whole idea that um, the Salton Sea was an accident, this crazy accident, and then everybody thought that it was going to dry up in 20 years. Um, but because of the success of other irrigation, you know, the farmland continued to extend. Um, and so there was more runoff from the fields. The Salton Sea could actually rise until now. Um, you know, I was just out there recently, and I noticed that some of the houses in Bombay Beach that were almost submerged are a little less submerged, I guess because of fallowing now. <laughs>